I'm having a good day, too. It was called No Collusion, No Obstruction. Good evening, everyone. Nearly two years of investigation, hundreds of interviews, thousands of subpoenas, and 25 million of your tax dollars. The Robert Mueller report is out, all 448 pages of it. It's an extensive document, and while we continue to work through and learn more, the underlying conclusion, investigators found no evidence that members of the Trump campaign or administration conspired or colluded with Russians to interfere in the 2016 election. However, despite the declarations from the White House that you just heard at the top, it does not exonerate the president of obstruction of justice allegations. Tonight's 360 Perspective, Elizabeth brings us the facts without the spin so you can make your own decision. For the last 22 months, special counsel Robert Mueller had two specific tasks to determine if President Trump or his associates conspired with Russians to interfere with the 2016 presidential election and whether his administration obstructed the investigation into those claims. The report is divided into two volumes, one on election interference and another on obstruction of justice. Here are the findings in the report. First, Russians did try to interfere in the 2016 2016 presidential election in several ways, spreading misinformation on social media. They probed state voter databases for weaknesses, hacked the Hillary Clinton campaign, the Democratic National Committee, and the Democratic Congressional Campaign Committee. Operatives posing as activists even staged rallies in Florida and Pennsylvania. According to the report, their goal was to damage the Clinton campaign, boost Trump's chances, and sow distrust in American democracy overall. Twelve Russian nationals were indicted as a result. Here are the facts about the Trump campaign and its ties to the Russians based on information that was not redacted. The investigation showed there were multiple contacts between Russia and the Trump campaign. And Mueller determined the Trump team expected to benefit from hacking. However, it did not establish that the Trump campaign conspired or coordinated with the Putin regime, nor did they take an active role in the hacking, ordering it or the release of that information. The report also does not present evidence that Russia manipulated votes or had any direct impact on election results, discrediting allegations that the election was rigged by Russians on Trump's behalf. On the obstruction side of things, the report summarizes 10 instances Mueller looked at for possible obstruction, including Trump's firing of then FBI Director James Comey, directives to subordinates to have Mueller fired, having his attorney general take over the investigation, and encouraging witnesses like Michael Flynn and Paul Manafort to not cooperate. Trump's attorney said all of it falls within his constitutional powers, but whether any of it actually amounts to obstruction depends on who you ask. Mueller's report says based on the facts and the applicable legal standards, we are unable to reach that judgment. It also says no person is above the law, including the president, and that the Constitution does not categorically and permanently immunize a president for obstructing justice. Now this goes to Congress. House Democrats already promising to subpoena Mueller and members of his team. And the Justice Department says certain lawmakers will get to see a less redacted version of the report. We went to an expert to find out more about what to expect next in this process. UCCS professor Josh Dunn tells News 5 he doesn't think Congress will uncover anything missed by the Mueller team. But the word you can probably expect to hear more in the coming days, impeachment. I think at this stage, it's going to be left to the House, and the House is just going to have to make a decision, uh, and particularly the Democratic leadership, about whether or not it actually wants to launch a, a, a full impeachment investigation, right? Because at this, at this point, I think Mueller has said, I've concluded my investigation. Uh, the D Justice Department has given its statement on it, you know, with the, with the Attorney General. So really, now it's, it's, it's left to the, to the House of Representatives. Nearly every major news outlet started analyzing the report the second it came out. We want to clarify some reports out there about President Trump's reaction to learning of Robert Mueller's appointment as special counsel. The report says he was angry with then Attorney General Jeff Sessions about the investigation. Many media outlets reported the president said out loud, Oh my God, this is terrible. This is the end of my presidency. It even includes a censored expletive he used. But that's only half the quote and could be construed as an admission of wrongdoing. The report includes the rest of the quote, which reads, 
Everyone tells me if you get one of these independent councils, it ruins your presidency. It takes years and years and I won't be able to do anything. This is the worst thing that's ever happened to me. We think it's important that you get the whole story so you can make up your own mind about the Mueller investigation. That's why we have posted the entire thing for you to read on the KOAA website, KOAA.com. You can digest it at your pace and make your decision. This report took two years to complete, and there will be more discussions in the coming days as the public learns more details. The special counsel's team referred 14 criminal cases to other offices. Only two have been made public, so there are a dozen other ongoing investigations connected to the Trump campaign, his administration, and the Trump organization in New York. Lots more to talk about on this topic. We'll continue watching out for you with the facts without the spin. In the meantime, if you have an issue or topic that needs the 360 perspective, email us at 360 at koaa.com.